Good morning. Good morning. It's Lila Gonzalez. I'm here with Elle Ingalls this morning. We're going to do our journey together with the Bowspring Pressure Queen Method. How are you? Good morning. Nice to see you. And if you're watching now, give us some hearts, give us some likes. If this is good for you, if this helps you out, uh, please share it as well. If anybody you know could use some help with their body, with their brain, with their business, we're here to serve. And what we're going to talk about today is having some energy. How many of you need more energy? Give me some hearts. You need some more energy. I know everybody does. This morning I was actually, hello, is everyone watching? I'm trying to get L on. Let's see, L there. One more button maybe. Oh, I've invited her. Hope she adds on. Oh, I think I've invited her. I don't know. Hopefully she pops up. Hey, Steven. Good morning. Elle, are you, you, are you out there, babe? Are you able to hop on? Good morning, Iglesias. Aw, so good to see you. Let me know where everybody is. What city are you in? What town are you in? What country are you in? Hey, Steven, you need some energy? Yeah. So I'm going to share before. I'm trying to get Elle on here. And before she hops on, I want to share with, with what I was doing this morning to get energized. I was, I actually woke up this morning a little bit like unsure, waiting to come on. No green button yet, she said. No green button. Hmm. Okay, that's strange. I'm not sure. Hello, hello, who's ever out there? So this morning, I, oh, driving to work. Steven's driving to work. Hey, cool. Yeah, I know traffic can be a time where you can lose energy. So you got to keep taking that energy in one way. One way I did this morning got energy was listening to Beyonce. Listening to Beyonce uh, run the world. Girls run the world. I'm actually gonna, just going to uh, look at it online now, maybe play it on my computer. Why not? Why we're waiting for Elle. I'm not sure. It might be a little bit challenging to see. So Elle, can you, if you can hear me, babe, can you request to see? I don't know if there's, good morning, Amanda, or Mandy. Amanda, Mandy. I'm used to calling you Mandy. I don't know what you're going by right now, but uh Gabriella, you're in Spain. So good to see you. I want to chat with you, Mandy, or Amanda or Amanda. Let me know what you want me to call you. Amanda or Mandy. I know I've done this before, but I have you on my phone as Mandy. And I have you here as Amanda. I know professionally, probably Amanda, maybe more chill. <laughs> Mandy. Hey. Oh, I love her. Gabby had the nice picture there of uh, her, her holding her leg up, like in the bowstring, and I love that. So, yeah, this morning I was trying to get uh, whatever feels best. I spoke, I think I'm like calling you two different names. Is that okay? Okay, there's L. Yeah, Mandy, I think I like calling you both, depending on what mood I'm in, if that's okay. <laughs> I go by Leela now, so uh, that's not call me whatever. I'm sort of the same. Call me Lil, call me Lillian, call me Leela. Call me uh, something nice at least, hopefully. Bella, oh, Gabriella, Bella. Mm -mm. Yeah, absolutely. She's like, I can call it your name. Yay. Hey, babe. Welcome. Good morning. Hey. Sorry, little technical difficulty. The little green button didn't come up, so I went off and came back on, and it worked. So if anybody's trying to do that, um, sometimes you just got to get back out and come back in. That's right. Boom. Just, what, just, just, you know, something happens. In the, hey, there's Elsie. Good morning, beautiful. Oh, my gosh. Good morning, chica. Yeah, we're oh. going to be in Florida. We're going to be in Florida next week all together, a bunch of women and some men. Um, but we're going to, we're all entrepreneurs. We're all trying to automate, not trying. We're all automating our business, working on webinars, working on funnels, working on signature course. We're going to be together. Hi, Queen. Uh, uh, yeah, good morning. Oh, good to see you, sweetie. Yeah, so I was sharing before you came on about how I get energized in, this, in the mornings. Some mornings I wake up really energized, and some mornings I wake up a little more like, you know, just kind of want to ease into the morning. Such stars, Elsie says. Good morning. Mm, you're a star, beautiful. I'm so impressed with what you've been doing out there. <laughs> She's amazing. Hey, Ashlyn, good morning. She's in Florida, too, actually. Uh, Elle and I are going to be down in Naples uh, next week for a business retreat. So what I was talking about, Elle, is... I got up this morning and listened to maybe like a handful of times of Beyonce's Girls Run the World. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I kind of want to go ahead and play it. I don't know what if it's going to sound like. So anybody out there, anybody else feel like the girls are running the world right now? <laughs> yeah, we run the world, girls. <laughs> so let's get moving, Elle. Okay. And I'm going to see if this, if you can hear this okay. And we're going to see if, uh, if we can do a little movement, actually, to Beyonce. What do you say? All right, all right. Oh, yeah. Okay. 
Okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna see what happens. If you can hear it okay, let me know. And if not, uh, we'll just do a movement without music. But this should be a little okay. fun. So. Can you hear it? Um, there's something about husky dogs. I don't know. I don't think it's working. Hey guys, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> can you hear it? Yeah, I can hear it. Yeah. All right, let's just move then. Put your arms forward. We're gonna open up the heart, everybody. First things first. We're gonna open up the heart. There we go. Roll your hands in, seeds, and then we're going to open up the side of the heart first. Yeah, so bend down, ribs lift. Now bring your arms low and just lift the ribs. Yeah. We call this tease leaps. It's like the winning position. Side ribs. You start to pick them up higher, yeah. Toes down. Open your throaty this way. Let it open. Toes, your legs. I didn't think that Beyonce's voice had really changed. Yeah, Beyonce's a, she's amazing. I had someone this morning say, say, uh, is that Beyonce? It sounds so different. My, yeah. So you ready? We're gonna do the balancing pose. Yep. Wide leg stance. Nice wide. Almost like a horse between your legs. Yeah. Keep your toes down. Yeah. Keep your legs from one side. Lift up the bicycle. Simple moves, guys. Simple moves. Wake up in the morning. Keep your ribs and belly open. Yeah. Touch down. Down. Toes touch. Sit low. Lean. Lift. Bicycle. Full belly lifted. Touch down. Switch again. Same thing. Lean low. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, and I love what you're sharing because 
the thing is it's asking everybody out there who's practicing with us or trying this out to be really intentional. So let me ask if anybody's out there and you have a hard time staying focused, if you ever catch yourself saying like I'm ADD or I'm ADHD and you're, you're not really, you know, but you have that kind of feeling, um, this practice is so good because it gets you fully in the present moment. Fully. Yeah. Totally. All right. Do you yeah. have any, uh, what? Uh, no, I totally agree. Totally agree. I always yeah. joke with my clients that when I talk about the 10 second solution, I go thousand one, thousand two, thousand. I have ADHD, ADHD so a lot. We're not going to go that long. <laughs> yeah, 2000, uh, based on 2011 data, Microsoft did a study and you may, many of you may have seen out there that humans are now to have said to have an attention span that's less than a goldfish. It's been in the Time I, Magazine and all that. Yeah. We'll go deeper. We'll go deeper in this when we do pressure free. But one of the reasons is because of the adrenaline, and so our, we're not cognitive. We're not using our brain. We're not using our brain fully. And when you become pressure free, you start to use your whole brain. So, yeah. cool. like, you're, like here we're using our whole body, and pressure free, you're using your whole brain. It's so cool. It's so <laughs> cool. Yeah. All right. Do you have any uh, song requests? Everybody out there, if you have a song request. Let us know. We'll play it. I hope it sounds good. I'm excited. This is the first time I've played music, so I'm going to try to maybe get on the music train. It's so fun. It is. It is. It, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll move to anything, so you just okay. do it, babe. We're going to do well, – I'm going to play this song. It's called Good as Hell, but it's this idea – she says I feel good, you know, and it's, it's actually a song that one of my uh, friends, Britt Manning, who's on here often – she put in a group, like I, I often will say, hey, what's your favorite, what's a good song to jam to? And this is a song that she shared in a group a while back, and I learned okay. about it. So anybody out there who, I'm not a big music buff, so if you know a song that's like super good to get ready to in the morning, let us know. Like put the link in the uh, comments and let us know what kind of song you love, and we'll, we'll play it, we'll jam to it in the mornings. But we're going to do this one, and we'll do the balancing on the other side. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Check one minute, baby, how you feeling? Alright, see, I'm such a Then low, toes down. We need to the bicycle. Keep it moving. Yeah, Lord. Trying to get some Bicycle. Straight on. Keep your arms straight up and lift your heart. And pull. And pull. Do it. So okay. first, we're gonna 
Go to the side. This is called, we bow the belly. Okay. And then we arc. And then we bow again. And then twist from the low ribs down here. Not the head. Here. Twist. So you, it's called bow. Oh, okay. It's bow, arc, bow, twist. And you can continue to do it to extend. So you bow the belly, arc the sides, bow the belly, twist the ribs. Bow the belly, okay. arc the side, bow the belly, twist the ribs. Okay? Okay. Bow, arc, okay. bow, twist. So I'll run you through it, Sweet Pea. Okay, sounds good. Okay. I'll do the music, but not have it quite as loud. Okay. Didn't hear me. Okay. So touch your or, uh, ecstasy arms. Fingers touch the sides of your head. Elbows forward. Toes down. Glutes back. Glutes back. Yeah. See if you can push your hamstrings down, your femur bones down towards your hamstrings. That's how you get rooted. Keep that rootedness from your low belly. Lean. So you'll arc. Yeah. Bow your belly. Let it lengthen. Head goes back. Twist from your low ribs. Keep your elbows narrow. Twist from your low ribs. Yeah. Little pulses up and down. Breathe. So you stay in this weird twist. <laughs> And you get more out of your spine by pulsing. Sit your hips low. We're going to do the same thing. Bow your belly. Arc your right side. Bow your belly. Twist from your low waist. And then a couple pulses in and out. Open your mouth. Full breath. Feel your breath down into your ribs and your heart and your belly. And then inhale, softly come back to center, unwind. You're going to love this. My mouth, before you said open my mouth, my mouth naturally opened. Like I, I needed to. Because <laughs> it's like, oh, totally, 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 totally. I seriously needed to, yeah. <laughs> it's like, <sighs> so what we just did, friends, if you're out there, it's called bow arc bow twist. We bow curve the belly, arc the sides, then we bow again, and then we twist. And you continue it, bow, arc, bow, twist, bow, arc, bow, twist, and you then you pulse, and you can get a ton out of it. It's kind of disorienting, right? Yeah, it is. I mean, you really, that's why I love how you grounded us at first. We got super grounded, because if you're not really grounded, I mean, you will just really feel unsteady. Yeah. yeah. I think that's why yeah. I open my mouth too. It's like, relax, relax, feel this, you know. Yeah. And we've got some people on. Carol, Carol's on and Dale's on. Thanks for joining you guys. Oh, hey guys. Cool. Is that Carol Frazier? This is um, someone on my side, Carol Bennett. <laughs> cool. I love it. Let's do a, I love how you're holding your waist. Hey, Emily. Nice to see you. Hey, so uh, I just want to ask everybody if, if they would like to have a longer waist. If anybody out there would like to have a more narrow or longer waist, let us know, hearts and likes, because that's what this is doing. When you take your butt down and your ribs over your hips, your waist is shorter. So when you take your knees, bent, hips, back, heart forward, your waist is actually longer. So if you keep these back, keep ribs lifted, your waist gets longer. If you want to have six pack abs, you're going to have a shorter, you're going to have like the CrossFit, like more side, this stuff. But instead we're asking you to have more of a narrow uh, uh, hourglass figure versus a square figure. Oh, Elsie says me. Yeah, we're going to get, we're going to, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you some stuff down in Florida. Have no waist. Yes, you do, girl. You just haven't found it yet. I'm going to show you how to move it. It's all about the ribs and the hips. That's what I'll share with you, sweetie. So if you are breathing into your, especially these back ribs, they give us a waist. It's weird, I know, but the more we breathe into the back ribs, so go ahead and feel that now, Elle. And anybody out there, feel your back ribs expand wide and back. And you'll notice it makes the belly 
it, it like instead of the belly going forward, when the ribs go back, it pulls the belly taut. It makes you actually more lean here. Yeah, I was showing that to I was showing that to a whole group of high school and middle school runners yesterday. I was coaching them, and I had them breathe into their back, breathe into their sides, just like you're teaching me. And it was amazing how quickly they were feeling it. They were feeling it really quickly. You know, it was cool. Yeah, yeah. So let's do the the, the other side. Yeah, I'm ready. Elsie said she went to Japan and never came back. <laughs> I can only imagine, girl. That's <laughs> awesome. Emily said, you look amazing. Ah, oh, you're amazing, Chica. You got this. Okay, so let's go and do the other side. So ecstasy arms, elbows narrow the whole time. Lean now to the other side. Yeah. And then little pulses, just to get yourself grounded. Remember, lower your hips, toes down, heels pull back. Glutes rise up. So that's the whole root from your toes to your hips. And then keep low from your waist. Bow your belly. Lift up. Arc again. To the side. Yeah. Bow your belly. Lift up. Root. And then twist your low ribs. Little pulses. Up and down, open your mouth so your belly softens. And then bow your belly, arc your left side, bow your belly, and twist from your low ribs. And then pulse again. So this is never ending. I mean, you could bow or bow twist all day, although it's going to get pretty intense. <laughs> Keep your hips pulling back, rise your heart and head up, and then release, and let it shake it out, girl. Yeah. How's it feel? It feels amazing. I mean, and yesterday what we did, um, I totally felt it in here. I totally felt it, like later in the evening. From what we did yesterday so i can feel like this is just even you know all the core and it's so important you know if you have low back pain if you have any problems with hips and everything this has got to be very strong if you're carrying extra weight on the front that's going to affect your hips so much so um, i learned all of this because i i really suffered for a couple of years after my second baby it took me a while to get that baby fat off and my hips were a mess. My back was a mess. <laughs> and my physiologist says, you know, you just have to have this. And I was doing all the wrong moves with yoga to help this. <laughs> so yeah. This is, Let me, I love cool. that you said that. I want to give everybody a, a little piece of, um, I'm fixing my hair here. Uh, I want to give everybody a little piece of information about what you're saying about the, the weight around the, the belly and the hips, but also the yoga and what you were doing. I'm going to give a little bit of, a little note here to everybody that hopefully will save you from having hip replacement in the future. Uh, the tendency for most of us in a, uh, is that our femur bone pushes to the front of our leg instead. And that's why I said push your femur bone back to your hamstring. Okay. Here's what's going on in the socket where the hip, the, the femur bone, the leg bone goes into the hip. When, when it pushes to the front, it rubs what's called the acetabulum. It's, a, it's um, some uh, protection from the bone, so the bone doesn't rub on bone, basically. Okay. Inside, the hip, inside the hip socket, because as a nation we're sitting too much, and even when we're walking, our pelvis is pushing forward, our femur bones are pushing forward, what that's doing okay. is it's pushing the femur bone into the hip socket forward, rubbing that over and over and over after years, and then all of a sudden, bone on bone pain, hip replacements. There are yoga teachers. This is, I mean, this is something I'm really passionate about. There are very, very, very famous, well-respected yoga teachers, which is fine, but who have had double hip replacements because of this. Wow, wow. And I think it's just, even people who don't practice yoga, people who are standing with their pelvis tilted, they're standing on cement floors working, you know, just all that. It's so fascinating to learn all this. I'm always fascinated by how the body's put together. 
how we can enhance it, how we can make it great. And Bowspring has been something like a, it's like a jewel. <laughs> it's just changed my life. <laughs> I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah. Let's sit down. Yeah. Let's chat pressure free. Yeah, I'm okay. so glad to hear that, guys, because if anybody out there is uh, looking, you know, haven't, if you haven't found your movement practice yet, if you kind of dabble in stuff, you try one thing, you try something else, send me a message. Let's chat because this is not just about going to a studio, doing a practice. It's about how do you walk? How do you stand? How do you sit? Because I really don't care if you go to the yoga studio and do an hour of class. If you're, if you're holding yourself in a way that's hurting you the rest of the day, we really want you to feel good over time, over the long period of time. So, so if you haven't found your movement practice yet, let's chat and see if this practice is the right one for you. Okay. Yeah. Um, I find it really interesting. Like even yesterday I caught myself, you know, we talk about with pressure free catching the brain or catching the thoughts, taking us in a bad direction, <laughs> in a direction we don't want to go. Really? I caught my body. I was leaning over to pick something up and I went, you know, and instead of like, no, 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 full heart, radiant heart, and then reach. <laughs> so I, I find that. myself... Yeah, I find myself catching myself, being intentional about my movement. And um, you posted something, and I think we mentioned it again earlier in the week, but I want to mention it again about how medieval people used to walk. We walked, we toe first, and you would feel like, is it okay to step? And then the heel would come down. And it's a great video because it shows, if you look back at paintings, and even things like the old Greek urns, you, everybody's calves were highly, highly crafted. Yeah. Hey, Kwan. Oh my gosh. Kwan, let us know what part of the world you're in right now. She's she was a bowspring. Uh, she's like my bowspring sister when we did training. Oh, cool. We did training together. So this yeah, idea. She's, her husband traveling the world right now. They're doing like a. They took a whole year off to just. They got married and then took a whole year off to travel the world and just wow. explore. I know. Isn't that cool? Wow. That's very cool. Well, my son and I were headed out um, on a trip once, and I forgot my running shoes to walk everywhere, and because I was, I just forgot them. So we stopped, and I picked them up, and I picked up Nike Freeze, um, just because they were like on sale, and I just grabbed them, and um, I, I hated them. I've actually, I use them a little bit, but I don't really like them because they didn't feel they give me enough support. But these shoes are for starting with the toe. <laughs> oh, they're supposed yeah. to imitate how you are when you're barefoot so I challenge everybody to and I did this with my group yesterday notice how you walk when you're barefoot and then notice how you walk when you're not I grew up in a house where my mother was always barefoot and we were always barefoot right and she she would even she hung her clothes out in the winter in New England and she walked out in the snow barefoot so she and I want to say that what you said is that you didn't like those shoes partly because they didn't provide enough support. So I just want to highlight that. I want to like hit that a little bit and just let everybody know that what we're teaching here is you don't need support from anything else but yourself. That's what it yes. is. I was at church. I was at church on Sunday and I was just looking over at the gals. She was an older woman, had a gal's shoes on. And they were like, I mean, it was like walking on pillows, you know, and I'm going to tell you guys, you don't need to walk on pillows. <laughs> No, we don't no. need a soft life all the time. We need that's how we lose feeling. The nervous system is like, oh, there's nothing to feel that I'm just going to shut down. That's why people yeah. don't have a, even if you don't have a, what's it called circulation, really good circulation. It's because there's no feeling. The nervous system doesn't have to work for a feel. So I would say try not to be supported by other stuff and see if your body can hold you. Oh, my gosh. It's so true. And I'm, I'm usually barefoot in my house, and now what I'm noticing is just much more intention about how I'm walking, you know, what's happening with my foot, um, because I know I have that crazy foot that's been broken a couple times, or nearly broken, and so I have, I have to be really mindful of it. And as I'm yeah. becoming more mindful in this practice, it's helping me all day long. So thank you so much, Leela. It's fantastic. Um, for people who are on, um, I know I see some names popping up, so thank you. Vina's on. Um, Vina lives here in Michigan. Um, you Michelle's know, here from Michigan. Who is it? She's in Michigan. Her name is Vina. Hi, and, Vina. Um, I got I got uh, Michelle here from uh from England, and then Dale. He's up in he's up in Canada. Wow. We got so people we got coming people on. And for those of you who don't haven't been on yet, this is Lila Gonzalez, and I'm Al Ingles, and this is Bowspring and Pressure Free.
So we're going to launch into the pressure free part right now. And um, so we were talking them. about, Lila, before, before we got on the show, we talked about um, how you notice that you trigger fight or flight. And then, you know, what happens next? What is that? How can we recover sooner? Are you recovering sooner? And you shared with me a story about yesterday where you noticed that you're starting to recover sooner, which is yeah. so fantastic. You know, most of us, when we trigger the stress hormones, we'll be in this messed up state for hours and hours. And we don't even realize it really, but we're still snippy at people. We're, um, we're tight. Our bodies are tight. Um, and so, you know, through both spring and pressure free, you're becoming aware of everything your thoughts, your body, where the tensions are. I always have people, in fact, one of my clients did it this way. She works for a Fortune 500 company. She, um, she puts a little ding on her computer. So on every hour to do a body scan, to see where oh, cool. is she holding tension? Because she had no idea until working with me how much tension she was holding in her body. So our body informs our mind, our mind informs our body. You can use either one to trick the other into where you want to go. That's so right. I would, like to share, I would like to share, usually I don't share this to like really deep, but I want to share this right now with you. I want to share some recovery tools because we're human. We're going to go along for a little while and not trigger and then boom, we trigger. And triggering means that you've reacted to something and released too much adrenaline in your body and kicked off the fight or flight stress response, which is going to mess you up for hours. It's going to depower your brain, do all this nasty stuff that you don't need and don't want in your life. And there are no more saber tooth tigers. So really, that's why we have this mechanism to protect us from a true attack. So we treat things like someone coming at us wanting something from us or someone, you know, not in our energy zone, you know, taking our energy away from us. We treat all these little things as if they're triggers and they're really not. So here's some recovery tools for you, Leela, um, and everyone on the call here. Uh, the first one that I have is cut yourself a break. Just cut yourself a yourself. break. Cut yourself a break. You are human and the unexpected is going to happen. And maybe you even tried to use the pressure-free tool, but you still face, feel your face turn red. You still feel the adrenaline buzz going. Still, just, just, to, just celebrate because you saw that you were triggered. Most people are totally unaware. They are asleep. You, they're so asleep. Oh, Elsie's chiming in here. Yes, so Tria triggered yesterday, and it took me a few hours to get back to my happy place. Yeah. yeah. It'll take your, and you can get back to your happy place here, but physically, you're not back to your happy place for up to 24 hours, Elsie, because you're a female. Yeah. And for men, it's up to nine hours that your cells are still messed up. I call it stress sludge. It's, it's that stuff they talk about, the plaques in the brain. Most of that is all caused by stress hormone release because it kills the brain cells. So you get all yeah. When you talk about, in fact, you, maybe people saw me when I was um, the second time. We went to the second side and I was moving back. I got sticky. So we talk mm -hmm. about getting sticky in our bodies and we get sticky in our brains. And so we're getting some, we're getting some um, crying because yeah, 24 hours is way too long. And that is my most, most compelling reason to never want to trigger fight or flight is that why would I want to mess up my cells for up to 24 hours? Honestly, what is worth doing that? If I really value myself, but here's the key, we have to value ourselves. Yeah. And you know, I'll just want to share, like, I, I'd be interested in knowing everybody that's out there watching now or later, like when you get triggered, what, what do you feel like? What happens? Like for me, some people get triggered and like, I'll either, if it's with another person, I'll sometimes I'll, I'll go in attack mode too. Cause I have a real sharp tongue. So I'll say something that's like sharp tongue, you know? Yeah. And, mm -hmm. or the other thing is that I get brain fog. It's like, I can't think I have to go to bed or it's like this really confusing, like, where am I? Who am I? <laughs> so yeah, I get like, yeah. it feels like a fog literally in my body, my system. Yeah. Yeah. Who else feels that? I call that getting stuck. You've depowered your cortex. You're in your reptilian brain. So all of your functioning of thinking and remembering and making decisions, it's all it's all compromised. So, you know, you're trying to make a decision about even what to do next and you're foggy. You don't yep. know what to do. 
So, um, and it's interesting, everyone's so different. I'd love for people to chime in here too. Like, are you really brain oriented? Are you cerebral? Or are you more body oriented? People, some people have no idea what the thoughts are in their heads. They don't pay any attention. Right. <laughs> They're just okay. going through their day, blah, 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 blah. You know? I think that's most and other people. people, other people really notice their thoughts and they're so consumed by their emotions, you know, very cerebral. They hear mm -hmm. the chatter. You know, so we're very different. Other people are brain, are body dead. Like they don't even know what's going down on down here. Other people are hyper aware of this, but not so much of this. So it's kind of fascinating to me. That's why I created all kinds of different tools. So cut yourself a break is like a slogan. Cut um, yourself a break. Cut yourself a break. Cut yourself cut a break. Yourself a break. It will release your body a little bit because you you know when you go in fight or flight you can get very tense. So cut yourself a break. And then I want to add um, another one is that you may need to isolate yourself. I think you, you want to go and sleep because it's like the next right. things that come out of your mouth or the next things you do can be really harmful and hurtful, especially if you're with other people. If you're a parent right. and you trigger fight or flight in the grocery store, if you're aggressive, you want to strike your child. And we've all seen people do that, right? We've all seen yeah. people do it. But when you're in that aggressive mode, the child is like the, the child is the fire, the fuel causing you to trigger their behavior. No, mommy, I want this or whatever it is <laughs> driving you crazy. Right. And you move into that frame of mind and you'll either say something or do something next that later you will regret. It's what we yeah, do. You know, I'll tell you that, that's so, um, you know, I was, I grew up in abuse. My mom was an abuser, uh, big time. And, uh, I have a lot, you know, I've forgiven and I have a lot of compassion for her because what you're saying, and I just want to say anybody who's been in an, in the other end of that, right, of the being abused, like this really gives me an, uh, just another level of compassion for my mother, honestly. Yes, yes. It's like yeah. she's like it literally scared to death in her life, so she was always jacked up by stress hormones. Like yeah. Her decision-making was so poor because so she was scared, so scared about life, about everything in life was super scared. So therefore, you know, the abuse was just normal because she didn't know how else to handle. Oh my gosh, yeah. It's so yeah. true. When I see something going down in the grocery store or anywhere, you know, between parent and child that's like that, I have enormous compassion. Yeah. I have enormous compassion. I really, I really just want to reach out and take the parent and hug them and say, you know what? I can help you with this. You know, it's like I can help that's you with so, this. That's such a good lesson for me because I'll tell you what, if there is one thing in this world that I'm just going to use the word pisses me off. Yeah. I see somebody not be nice to a child. Oh my it, gosh, it, I know. That triggers me. And so now it's like I'm going to have a new level of compassion instead of like all I want to do is take that child and run away with it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And instead, giving funny. compassion for the parent is another level beyond what I have yet experienced, to be honest. So I want to say thank you right now for giving me, in the future, I will probably come across somebody who's not nice to a child. And instead of saying in myself, like, oh, I want to save that kid, I can give more compassion for the, for the adult. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm even going to call it because I see it between spouses. And I see most of the abuse, woman at man. Most of the abuse that I see in the world is woman to man, and it's verbal. It's sharp tongue. It's, how can you be so stupid? You were supposed to mow the lawn. It's, it's so nasty, and I see it everywhere, and I see it on television. I see it in the media. Most men are portrayed as extremely stupid. Oh, they can't seem to get anything done, but look at the woman. She does everything because she's adrenaline-filled and she's whacked out on stress hormones. And, and I think it's, I wanna see that change. So yeah. I see abuse at the grocery store where the wife will be like, blah, 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 blah. and I just wanna, that's where I wanna just get aggressive. So you get triggered. Yeah. Out of it. <laughs> no, I love this topic. This is, we can, I mean, I just wanna honor this right now. Cause I, I, I think, and I don't know how it's gonna play out in my life, but I really do think that in part of my life purpose is to help heal the gap between the masculine and feminine. And I think I've shared this yeah. with you before, but what I have recognized this year was 
I believe that the masculine needs a very big apology from the feminine because yes. it, it, what, exactly what you're saying is like, they deserve to be treated as precious as well, just as women do. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, I've been, and, I've, and I'll claim it. I mean, I was in a, a, a marriage that turned uh, abusive on different levels. And I was, I mean, I said some very mean things. And mm -hmm. um, me too. We I we all do, you know. Oh yeah, and 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 not respect, you know. And I just love this because not respect, you know. We we talk about like women empowerment. We hear about women empowerment and with the glass ceiling and da 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 da. Well, in the end of the right. day, men right now are facing it too, and especially white men. Yes, very much so, very much so. And I feel as though um, we need to heal it, and we need to be very very respectful of all the energies, all yeah. the energies. All of them. We can all live together. We all can all live together can... and be happy. <laughs> it's so true, you know. And when you see someone who's who's a gay guy, you can have, you know, they have their unique energy. Like the masculine, feminine, how it plays out in all of us is different. And if you see someone who's different, we can have a lot of different reactions. So it's yeah. fascinating. You see a very masculine woman, you can have a very strong reaction about that. It's like. Let's yeah. let let's be peaceful. Let's let's be peaceful. <laughs> yeah, I've had very masculine energy, and and I think that's why I work so. I mean, I, in part why I work well with men clients too. Is too. It, yeah. yeah, both you guys. We, we've had this conversation. I love where this conversation is going. We you know both had very like tr type A driven you know masculine and been more familiar with like tapping into our masculine energy. So tapping into our feminine energy is a, is a new level of awareness, a new level of integration. Hey, Desi. Yeah. Oh, my teacher, Desi yeah. Springer, creator of the Bow Oh, she's, wonderful. She's, yeah. So know, can, I ask you a, can I ask you a question about this, Elle? Absolutely. Because this actually leads into something that was posted on my Facebook page yesterday. I said, like, okay. uh, what questions do you have about the Bow Spring Yoga? And somebody said is uh, – is the Bow Spring Yoga similar to John Friend's, his, the Anyasara in the past, the Shiva Shakti Tantra? Basically, uh, I want to get your opinion on the Bow Spring, and does it feel like a masculine, a feminine movement? What does it feel like in that energy? Um, I don't feel that it's either masculine or feminine. I feel like it's connecting. It's connected. It's a... It's a body-mind connection. So, I mean, being so intentional with my mind to craft, and of course I'm so new at it too, but I'm being so intentional with my mind to craft that, um, again, how we talked about yesterday, that, um, you know, with pressure-free, it's like I'm meditating all down. Now with a bowspring, I'm being meditative in my body all day, understanding how my body is connected. So I don't feel it's really either masculine or feminine. Um, I love this and, because I, I love this girl because what I have felt, because I think about this a lot because I'm writing a book around, you know, living your life without sacrificing your femininity. And this is perfect for me because I've lived in my masculine mo my first 35 years of my life mostly. And so what I find with the bow spring, I'll share with you, is like it's both. Yeah. We have that steadiness on the inside. But we have the ability to be as movement oriented as we want. We have the the masculine. I, this is the way I feel it, and I love that you said it doesn't have either. Because what I feel like yeah. if it doesn't have either, that means it has both. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Right. It's not one yeah, or the so, other. Like you can be steady while in motion. Yes. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, that to me, um, like that's why I feel like it's like masculine and feminine. I've gone back and forth about you know, like is it a feminine because it's curvy and it's movement and it's but actually, I find it to be both because it's the integration, just like you said. But men are curvy, too. At least the men I live with, and I live with four, uh, four of them. <laughs> yeah. They are curvy. Like, like Absolutely. Our, well, it's not the men, but I mean just the masculine, the masculine energy. Absolutely. We're all curvy, right? We're, even our cells. Yeah. 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 And even, like, motion, how we move. Um, so, uh, yeah, this idea, too, of... Um, one of the things that happens when you go into fight or flight is that your reflex is hyper. It's when you become very uncoordinated. So, yeah. um, you know, for the athletes I work with, that's when the baseball player will overthrow when it goes low to the first baseman. They have to reach down. 
if it's a hockey player, she'll she'll she always hits on goal. She'll go over the goal, past the goal. She's hypering everything, and so um, bowspring helps you really get integrated into your body. And then if you don't release the stress hormones, you are like super, um, just super aware of how you're moving everything. But the moment you release those hormones, you become it's like the flailing run. I'm getting away, or the the flailing fight, you know, we're trying to protect ourselves. So we go crazy, right? I mean, I think about my mornings waking up, you know, getting three boys ready for school, us to work, you know, all that stuff. I would, um, I would be in such a frenzy. I would bump my elbow on the fridge, like not just once, two or three times. I drop the peanut butter knife. I'd be like, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that you brought that up. What, what, what you're, it's like, People think they're accident prone. It's really that they're just not being present and they're, they're, Correct. they're, they're not present and they, they may be flooded with adrenaline. Oh, wow. Deja vu. I feel like we've talked about, I, we have never talked about this, but like in another lifetime, we talked about this. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. People who, um, if you feel like you're accident prone and I don't know if I've, I've mentioned this, um, in coaching sessions, but my mother said to me when I was in eighth grade, grew really tall, all arms and legs, you don't have a coordinated bone in your body. I was just so blown away by that. You don't have a coordinated bone in your body. And it was because I was so filled with adrenaline, trying so hard in everything I did. I was an uber achiever. So I'm sure I was just spilling stress hormones like crazy. So I was uncoordinated. And so what did I become? A cheerleader. <laughs> That'll, that'll junior high is like I didn't do it just for one year too. I was like a cheerleader for football and basketball in junior high, and then in high school I was a hockey cheerleader. Like those are really prime for any of my, no, my, you, my you, friends you in just, New Hampshire. Hockey, we didn't have hockey where I grew up. We didn't have hockey where I grew up. So when I hear about people have like hockey cheerleading. I'm like, what is that? That's wild. Cool. We actually cheered on the ice. You would have loved it, Leela. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'll tell totally you what, girl, cool. I, I, I still think, you know, I danced and I danced for a couple semi-pro basketball teams in my 20s and cheerleader and all that, all that. When I was looking at Beyonce this morning, I was thinking to myself, like, man, I got to get some booty popping, booty popping dancing or some cheerleading kind of dance. I'm like, you know, <laughs> I love that stuff. Oh, Elsie said my mom oh. told me I could not sing and then my tone was so off to try not to sing in public. Girl, we're going to be singing next week. Oh. Yeah, Mark, we never sing again until the shower. Let's sing together to next week, sweet pea. Yeah. What do you think? You know, when, um, when my husband and I founded, when my husband and I founded the music school here in Battle Creek, um, we searched 13 different early childhood programs to bring um, birth to age five. So we would teach little ones and their parents, their parents how to sing to them. We've become such a specialized society that we don't sing to our children because we don't feel like we're good enough. And I want to really let people know that your voice is absolutely amazing. Everyone's voice is amazing. The only reason you you were told that you can't sing well is because you probably tried to focus on the words of the songs when you were in school. We're so verbally cute. We got to get all the words right. So here's a tip. Music is made up of words, if it's a song, rhythm and pitch. Take the words out. I taught, my son wanted to sing, he was only little, and he wanted to sing the Star Spangled Banner. And he was singing it out of tune. So I said, take the words out, honey. Just go, <laughs> just hum it. And he did it perfectly. So take the words out because your mind is trying to do three things at once. Pitch, uh, words, rhythm, pitch. Take the words okay. out. And just do, oh, she was singing the National Columbian Anthem. I love it. That's so good. I love that. <laughs> so, so just work on pitch. Just work on pitch and rhythm. Can or I share? Or take one of those out. Yeah. And just work on tone. It's so fabulous. Every human was designed, your ear and your vocal cords were designed to sing. Our ear is designed to sing, to, to hear it and be able to do it. So you can do it. And you know, we had a man, I I'll never forget thing. this guy. Do you have the same thing? We had I, this guy, I, I worked for Kello voice. Company. I was like, I don't have a good voice. I can't sing, any of that. You know what helped me is what? the, is the since I'm so body oriented, 
it was when in yoga when we do like oh oh yes Yes. And so now when I sing, I actually try to use singing as like a vibratory tool for inside space. So I can yeah. care less about what I sound. I get, I'm feeling kind of emotional right now. <laughs> because singing is such an important part of human beings. It really is. Singing it, and it, movement. So I'm like, it's like I'm giving myself like a sound bath or something inside. I'm feeling the vibration instead of hearing the sound because I, yeah. I, you know, I just, I'm feeling the vibration and, and yeah, I can feel the emotion because it feels really good. It feels really good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in this early childhood class, we had this Kellogg exec and he was this huge African American man and he wouldn't sing with his little one. Like at first he wouldn't sing. And I talked to him one day after class and I'm like, you know, it's, it's okay because my voice is horrible. I've always been told I have a horrible voice. And I looked at him and I said, I'm going to guess that you have a really, really amazing voice. It's probably too much for everybody else. <laughs> so by the end of the class, he actually cried. He learned how to sing in our early childhood class. And so it's, it's so beautiful. But I want to do just one thing here because I think it's fascinating. Um, a lot of children today, you'll hear them not sing. You'll hear them yell. Because some of the music that people hear today is not singing, it's yelling. And so oh, they're right. confused. And they're, and they're also told to be really loud. But that's not what singing is about. It's like you were talking about, it's feeling all this vibration. So do this with me, Leila. Just follow me, okay? okay. Um, this, is, this is my speaking voice. This is my speaking voice. This is my yelling voice. This is my yelling voice. <laughs> this is my singing voice. This is my singing voice. Oh. See how different that is? Yeah. So you'll hear, like, you go to a, an assembly with little kids, and they'll be like, happy birthday. <laughs> you know, right? Like, yelling. That's not their singing voice. So when you can understand all three, like this, uh, you have your speaking voice. Not only that, you can actually start, especially with what you and I do as coaches and as schools, we can start to actually move into some of our singing voice when we speak to people and they mm. will be lulled and brought in. I, I yeah, it, that does work. Yeah, you're right. Amazing. I yeah. was working with a couple and at the end he said, he was like cheering on his wife because she's never been so calm. And I know part of it was that I use this mellifluous voice, like this just beautiful voice to get everybody in this feeling that, it's okay. And that kind of brings us full circle, like that idea of that you are good enough. You're good enough to sing. We are good enough and we deserve to have beautiful lives. And so getting into our bodies, releasing the negative thoughts in our brain, you know, and when you do trigger, be kind to yourself. Know and trust that you can get out of it. Cut yourself a break because you're learning. And this is process. And believe me, if you stay on this journey with Leela and me in three months, four months, you will have so much of a change in the trajectory of your life. It will be amazing. So I, I encourage everyone to stay on this journey with us. We're going to be doing some big things come 2018. And um, in November, Leela's having her retreat. I'm going to be there. And I would love to meet everyone that's coming on this call. Like fly in to Colorado with us and have three days. Um, she's just such an amazing teacher and I can't wait to be in her presence and do this stuff together. So yeah, um, I'll post the retreat link. Yeah. I'll just let everybody know. I'll post the retreat link on the, on the, uh, on the comments below. And, uh, yeah. So and if anybody has questions and you're like, I'm not sure if this is for me or maybe it is, or just let me know, reach out. We'll have a chat and see if it's the right fit for you. And uh, what do you got and going on? Um, I have a few spots this morning, uh, this weekend, over the weekend, Friday night tonight, and some on Saturday, some on Sunday. I have uh, about four or five spots open if anybody would like a strategy call with me. If you're like, okay, enough is enough. I really want to get clear of these stress hormones. I want to start to change my life. Any aspect of your life is changed when you become pressure free. So I really encourage people to come on my website, pressure free.com. I'll put the link under here too. And jump on strategy sessions with either Leela or me. You know, there's so much that we have to bring to you. And um, you can learn all about my online courses and my private courses, too. So, yeah, and I love what you said. 
I'm going to carry this with me today is that we all deserve to have a beautiful life. We do. We do. We really do. All right. Thank you. Namaste. I love you. Oh, Elsie said, want to go and have a full-time job, but wishing on possibility of launching myself out of it and going full-time into coaching. Pray for me, Chica. Yeah, you got it, girl. You're on a roll right now. We can see it. You may not see it, but we see it. We see what you're yeah. doing, and you're making more happen than you even realize. Keep at it, girl. And uh, we'll see you next week, and we'll be, um, we'll be supporting you, too, whatever you need, for sure. Hopefully, it will be before your retreat. Yeah, girl. We're going to make it happen. I'll tell you what, Elsie. I want to share this. Last year, actually, on the day of 11-11, the same weekend as the retreat, that day was the day that I decided to no longer for, work for anybody else and go out on my own. I was the, it was actually January 1st that I started, like that it was the day I was like on my own. But 11-11 last year is when I, I woke up. I, I'll have to, I think I even have a little video that I recorded. I, I was like on a mission. I looked at the a video. I said, today's the day. I'm no longer working for somebody else. <laughs> So that'll be a year that I decided, and this year's been unreal, amazing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You 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 can do it, girl. You're on a you're on a roll. Just keep at it. We need to talk. Yeah, well, let's uh let's connect. All right. I love you, Elle. Have a really great day. I love you too. Have a fabulous day. Pressure free always. Namaste. Namaste.